All right, we are live. Um, today I have Tyson Ray, uh, the winner of the KC Challenge and the Waco Nationals. Um, I'm really excited to have Tyson on the show to talk about his experience this weekend at the tournament. So Tyson, how are you doing? Hi, um, I'm good. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for interviewing me today. Yes, of course. Um, this is the first time I've actually gotten to interview, so I'm really interview you. So I'm really excited. Uh, could you tell everybody what you won at the KC Challenge? Oh, so this past weekend I won the sixteen eighteen junior black belt um minus sixty nine boys the, the the division to qualify to go to Mexico actually later this year, and also mm -hmm. won the sixteen eighteen um junior black belt open weight. Nice. Congratulations. Thank and you. you've been really active um, despite the pandemic, and you've been able to stay in the sport uh, with your dad's virtual fight tour and going to tournaments. So how has the season been going for you? Um, it's been it's been OK. Um, despite the pandemic, I've tried to stay training mm -hmm. um, even through the pandemic. And of course, the virtual fight tour gave me some opportunities to actually get some like physical contact and some some sparring going and then this past weekend it was also a great start to the year my mm -hmm. first event back i was i felt really comfortable and i was i was happy to be back so it's, it's been right. okay that's good yeah i know you're definitely thriving in the sport um and so specifically your experience at the the event this weekend how did you feel um you know about the covid protocols for the fighters and for the people there attending in person um i feel like it was actually amazing um, I feel like everybody's really comfortable. Everybody had it on their mask. Mm -hmm. um, after like every fight, the judges would spray hand sanitizer on the on the mats, and they would like actually scrub them after okay. every single fight or after every single division. Right. Um, everybody was pretty separated, unless you was with like a little group of people that you that you came with. Mm -hmm. um, but I, the the and when you walked into the event, they took your temperature. So I felt really really comfortable, and the the social distancing and the rules for COVID. They were actually really, really good. So yeah, that's good. So, you, so you felt safe at an in-person tournament. Um, was what, what were the spectators sort of like? Were they able to watch, or uh, were they in the stands? Um, it wasn't stands, but it was like a little barrier. So the spectators were behind the barrier, and okay. they they couldn't come inside inside of like the the mat area. They would just watch from a distance. So, and it wasn't too crowded. So. They had they had space to it was a, a big space so they had space to, to watch. So I wanted to talk to you specifically um, about the fighting styles of Waco um, and that of other circuits and you know point fighting uh, in general and your perceptions of uh, what you like better, uh, how you train for each one. So could you tell me a little bit more about what you like about Waco style fighting compared to others? Um. I like the rules of Waco. Well, some of the rules. Like okay. I like the the one point body kicks and the two point head kicks, but it's certain stuff like um like you could call like a timeout, you could be in a corner, you could call a timeout to fix your equipment. And it, mm -hmm. I feel like that's some it's like kind of a stall tactic. Okay, yeah. Match. And like the one on each side, sometimes that's like a bailout. So if you like you're down in points, the judge could call one on each side, you could keep clashing and it, it's hard to come back. So there's certain stuff, but like the on Waco, I like the people in Waco. The the competition, they're very patient. Like you have two two minute rounds, so it gives you more time to to adjust throughout the fight. It's not as quick. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, the fight the fighting is pretty good. What do you like about one point body kicks, two point head kicks? Um, you could take more risk. So like if you were at a, at a NASCAR event. Mm -hmm. Um, it's two point body kick, so you blitz somebody, you're giving up two points, so you you hesitate more. But right. in a walk in a Waco style fight, you take more risk and you're not as like hesitant to to throw a body punch because you know you only giving up one point, and you, you could get it back with a a, a a body punch or a back fist or even a side kick to the body. So I think you would take more risk at a Waco event than like at a NASCAR or another event that gives two point body kicks. Right. So what what also what do you what are the effects of having in NASCA it's the clash, no points to either either side, right? So what do you think that the net difference is if they're giving points to both sides? Um, I feel like it depends like uh, on your situation in the match. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, so like at Alaska, if the the no given like. Oh, I think Tyson dropped out. Um, I'm not quite sure. We'll have to get him back. Stay with me, guys. Um, I'm going to text him right now if he can just hop back in. I don't know how. Uh, I am not the most technolo- technologically um, equipped person, so bear with me, please. Um, it, I'm going to text Jesse right now. Okay. Um, he's back. Okay, great. Thank you, everybody, for staying. He is coming. Yeah, sorry. I'm not sure what happened. <laughs> okay, sure. You're, he's right here. Okay, yeah. So the you know in NASCAR the the clashes are worth you know no points. Okay. Um, I feel like it depends where you are in the match. Like I said, mm-hmm. like in a Waco, you can you can be up and both points are each side that could go your way because you're up. So giving a point to each side is is giving you a lead. But if you're down, of course that's that's a little hard to come back. But mm-hmm. in in NASCAR, um. I feel like it's it's pretty much the same thing, but like I'm not. Uh, I, I feel like it's pr- it's pretty much the, I feel like it's pretty much the same, but okay. it depends where you are in the match for, right. for both styles of fighting. So interesting. I feel like it applies the same to both. Yeah, both circuits. So how do you feel like the competition um, is at Waco International events? Oh, the competition is amazing. Um, I feel like there's a more variety of fighters, so mm-hmm. you might not fight the same person every time because your your divisions are, are massive. Like you might have eighty people in your division, or like thirty people, even forty people. That that's still a, a great amount of fighters. So I feel like there's a, a variety of fighters, and you'll never have. I'm not gonna say a bum, but you're not not gonna have somebody that's like less of skill. Everybody's pretty skillful. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows what they're doing. Everybody knows how to fight. Well, so I feel like the competition is, is off the chain. So so speaking of which, this is kind of tangentially related, but um, I was wondering your thoughts on, because um, you said, you know, you're, you're not going to really encounter a bum at a Waco event. But when you do, say, encounter a fighter who's not necessarily your level, do you find it challenging, you know, that phrase, you sometimes play to the level of your competition? Does that ever really happen to you as a fighter? Or are you able to stay composed even with, say, like a wild person throwing crazy stuff because lack of experience? Um, I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes it, it does throw me off. Somebody's coming at me. I'm not. It, sometimes you could tell somebody's gonna come at you like that. You can expect okay. it, but it throws me. I'm not gonna say it throws me off. I'm not because I, I feel like I know how to stay composed and and went fast. But sometimes it it, it throws you off. It's like, um, but I feel like I'm I'm able to stay composed and, and win the fight most most of the time. Right. Yeah. And, you know, you've been you've been really successful. Um, so I was wondering what what your training schedule looks like, given that you have a father who's who's a legend and an amazing coach as well. How does that interaction and relationship between father and coach play out? Um, of course, he's very hard on me because that's my father, my father and my and my coach. So, of course, he's really tough on me. I'm not going to say he's as more tough than me and as everybody else, but. He's he's really tough on me, but on my training schedule, we will train Monday through Friday, mm-hmm. and then we'll get some some Saturdays on, and then Sunday Sunday will be our our, our rest day. That's that's our. But we'll be right back into on Monday, and then Monday through Friday, Saturday, we will train in the morning sometimes, and then Sunday is our rest day. So going more specifically into what. Um, training looks like for you guys is it rounds is it drills cardio conditioning that you dedicate to a specific day or is it incorporated throughout the whole training session oh so we don't have like specific days to do rounds like we won't say monday we're doing rounds tuesday um we would do the whole the whole three so we do we start off with our cardio and our conditioning then we'll go to the drills and then we'll do rounds i'm not gonna say we do that every day Mm -hmm. but majority of days that's what we do so we usually end up fighting at the end of class not every day because that's just not what we do but every day we do our cardio conditioning and we do our drills 
every, every single day. So you're still in the junior division. Where do you hope to see yourself going forward um, through your martial arts journey? Wait, repeat the question one more time. Where, where do you see yourself going um, with martial arts and in this martial arts journey? There's a lot of development um, with the virtual fight tour, with Pro Point, and the different, uh, I know, WACO uh, breaking into the possible like, Olympics or in the World Games. Um, where do you see yourself going? Um, I can't say I see the future, but um, I'm going to take it step by step. So. I expect to go to the, I'm going to the men's division soon. Mm -hmm. So I just want to go to the men's division, um, try to succeed in the men's division and then only time will tell. So see where this, where this takes me. I let, I'll let it take me. Okay. I'm not going to plan the future for myself ahead of time. That time, only time will tell. So going into the men's division, uh, how do you, I know you don't want to sort of look into the future, but what do you think you personally need to do to be able to adjust to that, to that fighting? Um, I know the men's division is very different from juniors and mm -hmm. I, I understand that, but I feel like I'm very experienced and I'm, I'm ready because I, f I feel myself that I'm very skillful, I'm not trying to brag anything, but no, I, yeah. I think I'm very skillful and in the dojo, I'm, I'm fighting world champions in, in the dojo james poor my mm -hmm. dad jesse ray anthony merrick sheldon ray kodak ray so i'm fighting all these world champions so i feel like I, i'm ready to step into that, that division of course there's certain aspects i need to work on like i feel like i, I need to get stronger mm -hmm. and all this other stuff but i feel like i'm pretty ready to step into that that world so you were kind of born into next level um essentially what you guys seem so close knit you guys are like a family what is what is it like being on team next level and having those those different members in your in your group and your family supporting you it's amazing so of course I, um we are family because we we are family because we all came from the same foundation so we all knew each other since since the beginning of of next level right so i came up i came up with these guys um i see these guys every day we're in a dojo every day we go to tournaments so we we grew that bond with each other mostly because that we came from the same foundation and this in this in the same same roots same style of karate and we're in the dojo to get 24 7. and we communicate as if we're friends and family and not just teammates we mm -hmm. have that type of that type that type of type of bond uh, what is your next event, Tyson? Um, um, it's a little unsure right now. I can't give you an event that I will be at next, but soon. Uh, I'll try to get out there more the next for the upcoming year, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm, I'm not sure the next event. Right. And, you know, as tournaments are picking up, we'll definitely, I think you'll start to see more regulars at the tournaments um, and those numbers starting to go back to what we saw before. Um, yeah. So my last question for you is, you were you at the, the KC Challenge last year, I believe? Yes, yes. I and you won there game. last year as well, right? Yes, I, I, did, I okay, did. Okay, and so, so are you hoping to make third third time for next year as well? Will you be back? Is this the type of tournament that garners, you know, your your support after going to so many tournaments and seeing the different types? Um, really, what makes the KC Challenge and the Waco Nationals something that you want to keep returning to? Um, it's an it's an amazing tournament. And of course, I've never been to a Waco Worlds junior or adult, so of course that's something on my bucket list. And um, the tournament is just amazing itself. With um, great competition, um, with um, well ran, so it's it's something that I will keep attending in my future and to get to the the world champions, the world championships for for the Waco Waco Worlds. All right. Great. Well, um, I'm excited, and I, and I hopefully can get you back after you win in Mexico um, for a world. Thank you. Thank you. And the best of luck to you. Thanks so much for coming on the Power Chat series. Tyson, congratulations again. And everyone, thank you for watching. Thank you for having me.